He said, you're not gonna like this, but I just saw Joni. Oh Lord, she is pregnant. <laughs> I said, that's just a baggy shirt. Boy, get out of here. <laughs> Greg said, boy, stop. That's a baggy shirt. That girl been eating too many McDonald's cheeseburgers. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> that ain't McDonald's, Greg. That's your baby. That's your baby, bro. What's up y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do another episode of Unread Ghosted. Last time we were on here, we found out that Greg has a gambling addiction. So that's the, that's the secret that Greg's been holding. We don't know if that's the reason. I, I think there's another reason why he ghosted Joni. Um, I think Brady alluded to that. Like there was some, it was that plus something else we still don't know what that something else is but we do know that greg has a gambling addiction we lost our job we do got a boo we still got a boo her name is lacy she's a flight attendant i had to listen to a a long long conversation <laughs> about how she she also had an addiction way back when and she understands addiction and so she is gonna she is gonna help us through it you know she's she's a good person she's a good person i just i just didn't want to listen to her for that long <laughs> she we did not i i didn't have to go through that like i shouldn't have had to sit through that jessica didn't i like i did not deserve to have to sit through 10 minutes of them flirting and cupcaking on the phone but you know it's it's fine it's fine but let's just go ahead and jump right into it y'all okay so here is my mama remember i had ghosted my mama too y'all <laughs> look i'm a professional ghoster you know what i'm saying i just anybody can get it anybody can get ghosted you know so here's my mom i said sorry mom i was asleep i just saw your messages but anyway i'm not coming <laughs> remember my mama text and said bro your dad is sick like can you just come and can you just please come visit your dad i was like nah <laughs> nah girl nah mama said why not i said you know why not she said, what's the matter with you? It's your father we're talking about and he wants to see you. What are you afraid of? I said, I don't want to undo it all. All the work that I put in to get away. Mom said, oh, for heaven's sake, Greg, don't be so selfish. I said, you don't understand. It's not that simple. Do you know how crap it is being forced to stay in the family business and know you aren't the favorite child? Do you have any idea what that's like to go through? Mom said, what about what your father's going through now, Greg? We nearly lost him, Greg. He had a heart attack. He barely made it through and he's weak as all hell right now. And once you've had one, another is much more likely. I know you think of us as a burden. I said, don't be like that, mom. You know, it's not about you guys. It's the other thing. Mom said, don't blame us for your own bad choices, Greg. I know the two of you don't always get along, but it will really do him good to see you right now. Is that really too much to ask? We've already accepted you hardly even come to see us anymore and that you treat us like we don't even exist. Disrespectful as that is after all that we've done for you, but now of all times, I thought you want to. Listen, mama, I'm trash. So I don't even know why you coming on my phone asking me to do the right thing. You know that I'm trash. You know I'm trash. You know why you asking? Thinking that you're going to get another answer. Girl, good night. I didn't ghost the job for a reason. Good night, mama. <laughs> Here is Ron. I don't know who Ron is. Ron said, if you won't come see me, do it for your mother. She needs you right now. With me on the bench, she has to handle everything on her own. And she shouldn't have to. I wonder, is this my daddy? Is my daddy on my phone? Is Ron? <laughs> what is going on here? I said, don't you think I know that? He said, you sure don't act like you do. I said, you know why? He said, I know the crap reasons you keep feeding us. You've always had your head in the clouds, never accepting reality. You think it makes you special and interesting, but you're just a grown man acting like a child, never facing up to any responsibility, expecting us to pick up your mess while you go around making more of it. Do you know how many angry calls and letters we've had to deal with on your behalf since you left? How many times we wanted to just hand over your address so you could deal with it yourself, but we did what you wanted us to do and bought you time again and again. You're not five, Greg. We won't stand for that kind of crap anymore. We may be your parents, 
but we're not going to have your back forever, you know. And if you insist on behaving like you're not even part of the family, then maybe we'll stop treating you like you are. You'll come see us today. Or don't expect the next time you show your face around here, we'll let you in. Listen, daddy is laying down the gauntlet. You hear me? I mean, not the gauntlet, because that's a wall. Daddy is laying down the, the hammer, the gavel. The gavel? <laughs> The law. How about that? Daddy is laying down the law around here. Ron, Ron, aka my daddy. He hear my phone is Ron. <laughs> but it's, this is my daddy. Listen, he is laying down the law. He said, uh-uh, you come here right now. Not now, but right now. You come right now. I'm sick of your shenanigans, Greg. This is what this is what Greg needs. He needs somebody to, to shade him and read him for filth so that he can get his act together. Bravo, daddy. Bravo. I said, okay, I'll come, but you need to promise me there won't be any surprises. My dad said, it's your mess, not mine. See you at 1130. Okay, listen. My daddy said, beat me at 1130. Love when you're talking dirty. Here's Lacey. Here's my boo, y'all. Okay, remember we had talked to my boo last night. She said that she is ride or die. She she understands that I got a gambling addiction and she is going she is going to be a supportive boo. She's going to be a supportive boo, so I appreciate her. Okay. She said, "Hey, really glad we talked last night. I feel like I can talk to you about anything now. I hope you feel the same about me. What are you up to today?" I said, "Heading out for a drive." She said, "Where to?" I said, "Out of town." <laughs> She said, how come? I said, what's with the third degree? Why are you asking so many questions, girl? She said, I was just asking where you're going. No need to get crappy with me. I said, just got to take care of some business out of town. She said, what business? I said, will you give it a rest, girl? I don't have to tell you everything. Why are you in my business? Don't do that. Don't do that. Lacey said, I'm not saying you do. I'm just asking. I said, well, don't. <laughs> Lacey said, what the hell, Greg? Why you being so mean to me after I was so understanding to you last night? I said, I'm running late. I'm supposed to be on the road already. Lacey said, fine, enjoy. <laughs> I said, don't be like that. And she said, be like what, Greg? I said, be passive aggressive. Lacey said, I just don't understand why you're being such a butthole after I was so understanding about everything. This isn't like you. I said, I'll talk to you later. And then here go Lacey with the paragraphs. <laughs> here go Lacey with the paragraph. Greg, I don't know what's going on with you, but I don't like leaving it like this. However, your ex burned you. You have to remember I'm not her. I don't care where you go or what you do. You're absolutely right that your business is your business, but I do care that you're okay. And the way you were with me earlier made me think you're not. You were brave enough to tell me about your problems with gambling yesterday, and we promised to be honest with each other. But this morning... Well, I keep reading over our messages and I feel like you're hiding something from me. Did something happen last night? If so, I'm here for you. You should think of me as someone you can rely on. Whatever it is, I'm not going to judge you. But you need to be honest with me. Otherwise, I can't help you. And then <laughs> like 10 minutes later, I responded and said, hey, sorry, I was driving. Just pulled into a rest stop. You're right. I shouldn't have been so rude to you this morning. I'm just trying to figure out some stuff right now. Seriously, don't worry about me. Lacey said, can I help? I said, you're an angel, but I can't explain this. And she said, even after all we shared, are you afraid of how I'll react? I said, no, nothing like that. She said, then I don't understand. What are you keeping from me? I said, nothing. I'll explain later though, I promise. I know this isn't fair and I feel horrible, but I really can't explain this. Lacey said, you can't or you won't. I said, I gotta go or I'll be late. And she said, whatever. She said, whatever, Greg, whatever. <laughs> I know, I was just talking about how my boo was so supportive and then here I come this morning being disrespectful to her. What's going on? What is going on? I mean, I guess we got to get on the road to go visit our parents, maybe? Possibly, because my daddy said, look. <laughs> my daddy said, look, you about to get cut out of everything if you don't come see me today. You need to come see your family today. And so I guess I'm on the road to see my family, I'm guessing, maybe, possibly. But yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with Greg. I, we Listen, we trash. <laughs> we trash to everybody. We was just nice to my boo last night. 
And now this morning, I'm like, girl, get out my business. Get out my, you in my business. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's look at some stories. Here's Cleo. Hey guys. Um, first Hi. of all, thank you so much to everybody who weighed in on the whole cheating thing. Um, you really helped me to formulate my views and to give good advice to my friends. So thank you for that. And the situation gets juicier. So basically the guy in the situation is also not blameless, but he's refusing to do the right thing. And I may have come across some information that could be used to persuade him to do the right thing. I'm not going to blackmail him. It's not for money. It's not for my own personal gain. It's literally just to try and get him to do the right thing. Like, what do you think I should do? Should I use it? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. What's tea, Cleo? What's tea? Oh, Lord, y'all. <laughs> this is my story. Experienced paramedic looking for work. Healthcare job. Listen, <laughs> I forgot. I lost my job. I ain't got no money. <laughs> I don't have a dime. Ain't got no ends. My mama said, are you on your way yet? I need an ETA so I can know when to start making lunch. I said, I'm 10 minutes away, ma. And she said, okay, see you soon. Okay, look, I am going to see my mama. Oh, Lord, here go Brady, y'all. Brady didn't call me. Wait. Hey, man. Sup? Is now a good time? Is now a good time for you? You sound like you're driving somewhere. Yeah, yeah don't worry. Um, you're just on speaker. Where are you heading? Oh. <sighs> My parents' place. Yeesh. Yeah. How come? My dad's unwell. He, uh, he kind of didn't really give me a choice but to come and see him. Threatened to disown me. <laughs> the huge. You know? Your dad's the worst. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know I say you should have told Joni a lot of things, but I can totally understand why you never told her he existed. Yeah, I'm... just can't deal with him anymore. Every time I go back, it's just the guilt, the blame. It's, it's the last thing I need right now. I mean, understandable, though. Whose side are you on? Yours. But you can't blame them. I guess. Did you tell Lacey about the job situation? I did, yeah. And, and she was cool about it. <laughs> well, look at that. Who was worrying about nothing? Look at that. Yeah. But then my parents harassing me put me in a shit mood all morning. And I wasn't myself with her. And now she's upset with me. And I'm kind of worried that I've blown it by being an oh, ass. Dude, you have got to chill out. <laughs> Seems you being honest with her is working. Might as well just tell her about them. At least that'll be another thing out in the open. Yeah, I guess. Of course, if you're going to be honest, you might as well tell her everything. Well, yeah, one thing at a time. I'm just saying. It'll end up like the Joni situation if you don't. I know that. But we both know it's not that easy. I know. Life sucks. Look, deal with Daddy Sanders first. Don't freak out about your woman until she tells you you screwed up. <laughs> Isn't that the opposite to what you usually say about women? <laughs> that if you wait until she tells you she's mad, it's already too late? <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg! That was before I knew women like Lacey existed. <laughs> You're raising my standards, man. <laughs> now be a big boy, eat your mama's meatloaf, and then get the hell out of there. I like the meatloaf. Cool. Right, I've got to head into town for some food. Catch you later. All right, bye. Bye. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Whatever, Brady. All right, y'all, here's Cleo on my phone. It's a couple hours later. Here's Cleo. Remember, Cleo's story says she has some tea on the situation. And should should she spill the tea? And, of course, it's about me. <laughs> she She's subbing me. I know it's about me. But here go Cleo on my phone. Okay, she said three days from now, Eden Hospital, Ward 7, 2.30 p.m. I said, what's that? She said the appointment for Joni scan. There's nothing I can say or do to convince you. So you should go see for yourself. See your child. You should take this chance, Greg. You might not get another one. I said, I can't do this. She said, why not? I said, I got stuff to deal with of my own. Cleo said, this is your stuff, right? It's your kid. Whatever else you got going on is temporary, but this kid is gonna be your child for life. And like I said, I think you make a good dad. 
I said, I just had a long drive, Cleo, and I've had a rough morning, and I'm kind of busy right now. The last thing I need is another one of these manipulative plays. If Joni's so desperate to have a dad with her, get her to take Wesley or Curtis or whoever else is still hovering around the edges of her life. She said, I didn't want to play it this way, Greg, but you give me no choice. I haven't said a word to anyone about you and Millie so far. Cleo know about what you know, girl. <laughs> but if the only way to get you to step up is to smack you in the face with reality, then I'm not above doing it. I said, you have no right to do that. And anyway, you can't prove anything. Cleo said, oh, please. You think that'll matter when everyone knows what the two of you are like? It would only be fair. After all, you left Joni with the mess of telling everyone what happened between you. This explanation would make her life a hell of a lot easier. I said, I can't believe you're threatening me with this. She said, what do you think is an easier story for people to buy? That you left Joni because of something Joni did that she can't even pinpoint? Or that you left because you and Millie were having an affair and you didn't want the shame of having to explain that to anyone? I said, that doesn't even make sense. Why would I leave Chicago if I wanted to be with Millie? Cleo said, why do you do anything, Greg? <laughs> right. Does anyone even know you? Because it looks like in the end, even Joni, your fiance, didn't even know who you are. Go to the appointment, Greg, or at least talk to her. Give her answers so she can move on and decide what's best for herself and her child. I said, I don't have time for this. This is a twisted lie and you know it. Cleo said, that's fine, Greg, because I'm done wasting my time trying to persuade you to step up your responsibilities. You should be doing it yourself. A real man would. Woo, Lord. She still like really gave him proof that Joni's pregnant. Do we know that Joni's actually pregnant? Like we saw the text messages from back when we were playing as Joni, but I don't think Joni would lie about being pregnant. Do y'all think so? I don't think so. But Cleo is not giving no proof whatsoever. Like, but I guess she can't really ask Joni, like, hey girl, you got an ultrasound or something that you can show me? I guess she can't really do that because if she did that, then she would have to explain why she needs it. And then if she explained that, she would have to explain that she's still been talking to Greg, which I assume that Cleo has not told Joni that she is still in contact with Greg. I assume that that's what's happening here, but it's all messy. This, <laughs> this is mess, this is mess. Okay, here's Brady. Brady said, Greg, you done with your parents yet? I said, just finished lunch, but still here, why? He said, you're not gonna like this, but I just saw Joni. Oh Lord, she is pregnant. <laughs> about her not being pregnant and we'll we can't believe it but oh lord she is pregnant why couldn't cleo just take a picture like this and send it to greg okay that's fine i said why are you showing me this he said look at the photo and then show her belly she really is pregnant it's been like six months since you left i said that's just a baggy shirt boy get out of here <laughs> she probably just added a few pounds i know i did after the breakup <laughs> Brady said a few added a few pounds. Look at her. I said, not you as well. Did you speak to her? Brady said, no, of course not. I said, good. She's not pregnant. There's no way. And if she is, it's a hundred percent not mine. Brady said, come on. I heard you guys. My room was next door, remember? I heard enough of your sex life, dude. Oh Lord. <laughs> That's disrespectful. I said, no, I mean, she's making this up to get back at me for ghosting her. She was on birth control. Brady said, if that's the case, imagine what she'd do if she knew the real reason why. I said, stop it. I'm sweating it already. I've already got Cleo sending me appointment details and threatening to expose me and Millie. Brady said, you still haven't blocked her, right? <laughs> I'm starting to think you want to stay connected to Joni somehow. I said, maybe I do. He said, what the hell, man? I thought the whole point of you moving away was a clean break. I said, I feel guilty, okay? And with everything I've kept from her, I'm not sure what to think anymore. Brady said, there's part of you that thinks Joni might not be lying, isn't there? I said, I don't know what to think no more. Oh, Lord. We was just talking about how we ain't got no proof that Joni's pregnant. And then here go Brady snapping pictures. Why is he, Why? where was he Was that he was so close to her? but they didn't talk. 
Joni is pregnant, y'all. Greg said, boy, stop. That's a baggy shirt. That girl been eating too many McDonald's cheeseburgers. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> that ain't McDonald's, Greg. That's your baby. That's your baby, bro. All right, here's Warren. Warren said, are you still there? I said, how do you know where I am? And he said, mom and dad told me you were going to see them today. Oh, Warren must be my brother, y'all. Because remember, I told my dad that, or no, I told my mom that they had a favorite child and I was not the favorite child. I guess Warren is the favorite child. So Warren is my brother. Warren said, I'm sure they're very happy to see you at last, even dad. Just don't make any more problems for them, okay? I said, what the hell you mean by that? He said, I just mean they've had to handle a lot of stuff on your behalf since you left. But then you always did like to leave your bedroom messy, no matter how many times dad yelled at you. I said, I only came because dad's sick and forced me to come and see him. He said, all the more reason not to upset him. I said, me upset him? He's the one who used to say he wished they'd only had one child. Warren said he meant because of the financial hardship of raising two. I said, oh, please don't pretend you don't know that they meant if they only had you. You're the golden boy first child. The only one with any chance of making them proud. The one who did everything the way they wanted. He said they never loved you any less, Greg, no matter how much you want to think that. They just never knew what to do with you. I said, really? Because it seemed like dad knew exactly what he was doing when he made me work on the farm for three weeks solid that summer that I dented your car. He said he didn't make you do that because you dented the car. He did it because you lied about the fact that you dented it. Listen, I'm a liar just all around. <laughs> I've been lying since since the womb. It, it, like, <laughs> I know I was, I'm trash now, but dang, I was trash as a kid. Good Lord. I said, you sound just like dad. Warren said, it wouldn't hurt you to listen to him once in a while. I said, I'm here with him right now. Warren said, sitting in his room on your phone while he naps isn't being with him. I said, what you want me to do? Wake him up so he can chew me out some more? He said, come on, Greg, don't be such a child. I said, here comes the lecture. I knew you couldn't resist. <laughs> and here go the lecture, here go, par here go some paragraphs. Warren said, you know what? We've been patient enough with you. Mom and dad have been killing themselves covering your tracks while running the farm and sorting out your mess. But do you have any idea how much stress you caused them? And now dad's literally had a heart attack and you don't even have the heart to feel bad about it. They've done all they can to protect you, but you're just treating them like trash. I love you, Greg, because you're my brother. But sometimes I really, really don't like you and what you're doing to this family. You know your problem, you never grew up. That's what landed you in this mess in the first place. Is that why you return home? Because you got yourself into a mess in Chicago? Stuff is gonna catch up with you sooner or later. You can't keep running from the mess you make. You need to grow up and realize that every action has a consequence. And if you make a bad decision, you need to live with those consequences. Woo child, come on Warren. Warren and Cleo and my daddy is on my phone reading me reading me for filth and this is exactly what listen i i know i'm supposed to be greg but i'm here for it i'm here for everybody shading me and everybody calling me out on my mess because greg is trash greg is trash i've been saying it from day one that greg is trash and i'm glad that people people understand that and they realize it and they holding him accountable i appreciate that i really appreciate that i said you know what your problem is you always assume you got it figured out but you don't know me and war said i know you better than anyone greg oh lord okay i like it I, I like being held accountable that's what that's what greg be because he been trash the whole time Okay, here go R. R says, so Greg, what's it gonna be? Remember R, I don't know who R is. Remember R was on my phone threatening me to, to do something. We don't know what that something is, but to do something. Otherwise, they would tell Joni the truth. We we don't know what that is, but he, he she, they, I don't know who R is, but R is gonna tell the truth and, and R is giving me an ultimatum of, What's it gonna be? What's what's gonna happen? I said, why are you doing this to me? They said, because you didn't keep to your word. You brought it on yourself. I said, at least let's talk about this. And they said, I'm sick of meeting you late at night at your rendezvous place. I said, I'm not there anyway. They said, so you're not in Chicago? Where are you? I said, Akron. 
<laughs> they said running away from your problems. I said, screw you. That's what got you in this mess in the first place, Greg. I said, so you're actually going to tell Johnny. And they said, well, someone has to. You're clearly not man enough to. I said, well, it doesn't matter anymore. We aren't together. And they said, well, no doubt you're trying it on with someone else. Okay, so R, I think, is a woman. <laughs> I think R is a woman that I may have had an affair with while I was with Joni. Maybe, possibly. It wouldn't be Millie, right? It wouldn't be Millie unless R stands for roommate. I feel like Millie would just text me from her number, right? Like, Millie wouldn't have two phones, right? I don't know. Maybe this is another... Oh, maybe R is that person that I was caught with in the first episode. Remember I was walking down the street with somebody. I don't know who that person was. We don't, we never got an answer to that. <laughs> we never got an answer to that. Unless R is Rhonda. What if R is Rhonda? You know what? I'm not here. I'm just, I'm just gone. <laughs> that would be a plot twist. That would be a good plot twist. Let's look at some stories. Um, here's Warren. The best people I know. They taught me everything. I'm so grateful they're in my life. That that's my mommy and daddy. That's my mommy and daddy, y'all. Okay, here go Lacey. Hey boo. Guys, guess who I'm about to go see? Ooh. I am about to see a really old friend of mine, Captain Tommy. Oh my god, he's part of the OG original crew that we used to fly together, travel all over Europe together. And I'm just super excited because I'm gonna go see the crew. Everyone's gonna be there. He's taking us out to lunch. What a gentleman. Anyway, it's the original dream team, so I can't wait to have the best time of my life. Check in later. Okay. <laughs> Move, Cleo. Okay, y'all, we gonna end this right here. We got some good intel today. We got some good intel. We still got like half the day. Like this is just like half the day that's over with, but we gonna jump into the next half of the day in the next video. But yeah, we got some good intel. We found out that my mom and daddy is, they live in, I guess an hour outside of Akron, or not an hour, they live somewhere outside of Akron driving distance I had to go drive to see them they live on a farm and my daddy had a heart attack but I ghosted my family I don't I don't that farm life was not for me that farm life was not for me so I, I ghosted them you know I've been trash since a baby since I was a baby but I ghosted them and I don't want to have nothing to do with them. But my daddy was like, look, if you don't get back here, if you don't get back here, it's going to be consequences and repercussions. So I said, all right, I guess I'll hop in the whip, ride on to the farm. And so I went to have lunch with my family. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we got a little bit of Greg's life. Greg been lying since a kid. Greg has been lying since he was a kid. <laughs> it's, it's fine, though. It's fine. It's not really fine, but... It's fine. Me and my boo, we got into a little, we got into a little tiff this morning. <laughs> we got into a little tiff. I, listen, I don't know what Greg told, told her, why you in my business? Why you in my business? Get out my business, girl. Cause it's mine, oh mine. Yeah, we found out some good information today. We found out Warren is my brother. So all these, all these folks in my phone, they fed up with me. <laughs> Everybody is fed up with me. Rightfully so, rightfully so, because I'm trash. But everybody's fed up. Cleo got some tea on me. Cleo got some tea. And then we got a picture of Joni, and Joni is pregnant, according to the picture. She do got a she do got a bump. She do got a baby bump. So listen, we got some good we, we done made some progress today. We done made some progress today. We still don't have a whole lot of answers, but we got a whole bunch of people either fed up with me or blackmailing me on my phone <laughs> that's that's all this that's all my phone is full of full of people that's either shading me or blackmailing me that's all it is but you know it's it's whatever it's, it's whatever maybe at some point we gonna you know we gonna get ourselves together at some point all right y'all that's it thanks so much for watching be sure to subscribe if you have not already and i will see you in the next video bye